So guys, the other day I got lost. I mean literally lost in the middle of nowhere. I didn't have my phone, it died. I didn't have my watch and I was panicking. So today I want to try some old school navigation techniques to see if I can ever find my way out of such a situation, if I'm ever to find myself in it. So this is what I want us to do today. First, can I find my bearings without my phone? I also want to know, can I tell the time without my watch? And because we want to do this the old school way, I want to see if I can pick up some more indigenous knowledge. So, learn. Right, so we're going to need some sticks. These will do, they're from a broom. We'll also need the face of a clock and a pencil. That's literally all you need and of course the sun. And what my producer will need from me is my phone. Now that we have everything set up, Let's get out of here and go outside, find the sun and test this out. Okay, and we outside. We found somewhere nice and flat outside to see if I can actually find my directions just using the sun. Luckily, we live on the equator, it's already so hot and all you need based on the instructions from the internet is a stick and some rocks. What you do, simply stick your stick in the ground like so and you see that the stick forms a shadow. And the first thing we're gonna do is put a rock at the end of that shadow. And essentially, as the sun keeps moving, the shadow will and we will follow every single bit that the shadow moves with another rock. Let's break that down. The sun always rises in the east, which means shadows are cast to the west. As the sun moves westwards during the day, the shadow is cast closer to the east. Of course, in reality, the sun doesn't move. In fact, it's the earth that's rotating. But since we're on earth, we see it the other way around. Right, I think we have enough rocks now to establish what's going on here. We need another stick. So. Essentially, we're able to determine where we are because this is the west. So what we've essentially created is the west-east line. Pretty simple, huh? So it means determining where the north is should be fairly simple because all you need to do is take your other stick and place it exactly 90 degrees over your west-east line. And that tells you that the north should roughly be there and this is the south. But I want to confirm how true this is. So I'm pulling up my compass app on my phone. Let's see what it says. We're off by about 20 degrees, but I think that's fine. So I would say that this experiment is a success. Now that we know where the cardinal points are, I do wonder if there's another way or another technique of doing this. And so I've invited someone special here with us. Katampo is here. He's from the Ma community. You can already hear him. He's jingling because of your jewelry looking so nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So being part of the Maasai community, obviously, yes. as herders and pastoralists, you're used to being out in the open. Yes. Yes. But I'm guessing this is not what your forefathers used to do to determine their way back home. No, this is not what they used to do. But I think they, they always find their way home. So we have maybe let's say two or three ways of telling direction. First and foremost uh, is that sun will always rise from the east and set in the west. When you are at the east, your shadow goes to the west farthest. When the sun is uh, the middle, your shadow is Shortest. Shortest. So Katampoi, because it's not always hot, yes. right? We don't always have the sun. Some days are very grey. In that case, how do you know which direction to go to when you don't have the sun to guide you? For us, we have at least some of the landmarks. Right in front of us, we have Ngong Hills. I did see the hills yeah. earlier. On the south, we have Kilimanjaro. We usually see it very early in the morning, especially All when the it's way cold. From Tanzania. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, Kilimanjaro was once ours then. <laughs> A story for another <laughs> for day. For another day. Fantastic. Yes. So now that we know which direction to head in, yes. the next thing I want you to teach me is how to tell the time. Yes. Okay, sure. let's get our equipment. I'm going to put you to work a little okay. bit. Okay. Okay, Katampoi, we have everything we need All right. to make our sundial. By the way, it's going to be very rudimentary. There's some pretty precise ones out there that okay. I've seen. Uh -huh. But this one is basically just manila paper <laughs> and we have a pencil or something straight and we've got the sun. By the way, if you notice that it looks a little bit different, we did have to take some time off because it was way too hot. Too hot. Too and we hot. couldn't film this. So the idea is that if we place this against our cardinal direction, so assuming that's north, yeah. 
that's west and that's east. Yep. Simply by putting the pencil in here, we should be able to tell the time. What time does that say it is? Seven minutes to three. It's actually 3.36. 3.36. So we're not so far off. But another thing to note is that because we're on the equator, and so the sun is very, very close to yeah, us, yeah. which means it affects how the shadows, the shadows. are falling. So mm -hmm. give or take half an hour, I'd say that's pretty good. Pretty good. Your great ancestors. Yes. How would they tell the time? Because they didn't have any of this stuff. First and foremost, uh, they were not very accurate with seconds, but the hour, they were not so bad. If you can tell from the size of my shadow, it's not very tall mm. like I am. Oh, so basically the farther away you are from midday, the yeah, longer your the shadow longer is. Sh That's fantastic. Yeah, so if by six, my shadow should be almost the farthest end. My dreams of becoming tall yeah. might be realized. But Katampoi, you did say that there are other things we can learn in the forest. Yes, still, right? yes, yes. Um, shall we go there now? Let's do that. This way? Mm. This way. No, this, this, this way. This way. Oh. <laughs> so here in the forest, we look at such trees. Eh? When you look at these things. This, the lichen. The lichen. Yeah. So if you look at this side of this tree, there's a bit of yellowish. Yeah. If you look on this side, it's a bit darker. And harder. And harder. And the reason why, this side is the dark side. This side is the light side. So this means east where your sun is coming from. Oh, because it has... It, it has more time shining. The yeah. The sun is shining on this tree more than this side. But I understand it's not just the trees that have sort of like, that can reveal things, that even rocks, rocks. and birds and animals. True. The pigeons, they wake you up in the morning. The rooster is one of them also. Cows in the morning, they mow a lot because either they need to be milked, or it's time for them to go and feed. So those are some of the animals that tell you also time. So we're all sort of operating on a natural circadian rhythm. Completely. Daytime, nighttime, yes. midday. But now we are seeing people cutting down. This used to be a very dense forest and uh, actually the reason why you could not see it clearly on these trees because most trees have been cut so it's opening up more space yeah so you can't see that difference so clearly i mean that was really cool right mm, yeah but we have one more task uh -huh. and it involves me building wow <laughs> <laughs> are you down for it yeah yeah why not you see we have a new setup here for us Ooh. we need to identify mm -hmm. where nairobi kampala and Dar es Salaam are i have a sneaky suspicion you already know Yep. But the idea is to use <laughs> our cardinal points that, okay. that we got. Yes. I know for a fact that Nairobi is northeast from here. From here. What do you think? Just a little bit. This way? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Kampala is northwest. Northwest. Finally, we have Dar es Salaam, southeast. The moment of truth. Mm -hmm. We need a phone to verify. This is Kampala, which is meant to be northwest. Yeah, that's it's right. good. Yeah, Nairobi is definitely off. It's a bit too north. I think you should have been somewhere here. Then it would have yeah, been northeast. Yeah. And Dar es Salaam is south. Oh, we are good. Good job. Yeah, no. Well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> so Katampoi, please, yeah. before you go. Yes. I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. I had three tasks today. Yes. I know for a fact that I could find my way without my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think I can accurately tell the time without my watch? Do I score an A on that? Uh, maybe a B plus. A B, I'll take a B plus. <laughs> I think I've learned some local knowledge, Have some you? indigenous knowledge. Have you? Yeah. Good. I think I've done pretty well today. Well done. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. But now it's time to go. The cows are about to come back home. So. This way or that way? This way. This way. <laughs> <laughs> So what have I learned today? That technology is a very important aspect of my life. However, I can definitively say that in the event that I was dropped in the middle of nowhere and I didn't have this guy or this guy, that because of all that I've learned today, I would probably survive. What about you? Let me know.